world has changed. America has changed. If something were to happen tomorrow... How self-sufficient would you be? Could you grow your own food? Could you sustain your own livestock? Could you survive? This is the We Grow Our Show with Nick and Don. Nick and Don talk about everything from politics to planting. They cover techniques, methods, and tips on how to not only survive, but thrive. Visit the website at WeGrowHours.com. Lock and load. This is the We Grow Our Show. Get your grow on. Welcome back to the We Grow Our Show, where the facts are mostly true. You keep saying that. <laughs> They're always true, damn it. Well, I'm not exactly doing due diligence and looking stuff up and making sure. You know, most of mine shot from the hip, and then I'll apologize later if it's wrong. No, this is called real world experience. Real world experience. Okay. Exactly. That's what we do here. We go out and we test all these theories. Oh, really? Yeah. I've got a rabbit poop gasifier in my yard. That's true. <laughs> I need to come get that, by the way. Yeah. I've been in your house twice since I left it there. Yeah. It's kind of fun to play with. Have, have you been playing with it a lot? I did. I, I shot it with, I, I shot it with a laser to see, <laughs> <laughs> to see if we could get it ignited without, it's a battery powered laser. It's oh, the highest gosh. laser you can get. That's a blue laser, highest blue power. Laser. Yeah, that it burns cool. the crap out of you if you hit it, if you put it on your leg. Why would you yeah. do that? Because <laughs> it's fun. Hey, I have an idea. It's a great way to Let's chase shoot kids myself around with a laser. <laughs> well, shoot myself? No, you got the kids running around. No, I'm kidding. Okay, for no, CPS, um... that's Don Cupper at <laughs> WeGrowOurs.com. No, I would never do that to my kids. But we, um... I'm calling Austin. I'm going to find out. <laughs> He's the one that was out there playing with it. He was lighting fireworks off with it. That's cool though. So is it is it the same technology, the same diode they use in Blu-rays? I have no idea. Because blue lasers, if I know this or if I remember right, was the hardest to channel and hardest to control and that's why it's so new because you could get a very fine stream on it and that's why they call it Blu-ray because you can you can actually write in a smaller space than the previous lasers. Well, if this was a Blu-ray, I would think it, melt, it would melt the DV the Blu-ray. Yeah. If that was what was hitting it. Because this thing is hot. I mean, well, we're, that's, we're that's lighting what they fireworks do. They, on. They etch. It was kind of cool. So we could go 50 feet away and light the fuse with that laser. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. And it's battery powered. So I'm like, Hey, let's show it, put it in the gasifier. See if, if we can use it as an ignition source, wow. you know, grid down, you got to light it and you don't have a blowtorch or whatever there to, that thing can be tough to get lit. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Well, that design we, anyways. Yeah, well, what if we take that and just shoot the laser in it? Huh. And it works. And that would be cool to like light off other little thingies, <laughs> you know, around your property or whatever you need to do. Are you referring to booby traps? No, I would never do that. No. No. Again, that's Don Cupper yep. at. Yep. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it was kind of cool. So yes, I've used it. All right. Well, that's cool. I'm glad it's getting used. I, I have to say that was probably. Thrown that was thrown together the most. I mean, let's put some pictures up of it. I've got some pictures on my phone. We yeah, I posted. There. I think a link to your video of it. Oh, that's right. That's so. right. It man, it smelled. Should I tell the story about going to the convenience store? I got to now. <laughs> so, uh, I built a gasifier with the intention of using it to convert rabbit poop into sin gas or producer gas, which is what a wood gas burner or wood gas gasification device will do. Um, it's the same concept. Any biomass that goes into it, uh, if it's at the right humidity and all of that, it will produce a propane like gas. Anyway, if you don't have anything burning the gas you're producing and you're standing next to it, you're going to smell like the gas is released. When you're doing it with pine chips and wood chips of any type, you smell like a campfire. Well, when you're doing it with rabbit poop, you smell like a giant turd. <laughs> Yeah, a, di it, a giant smoking turd. Well, and you know what it reminded me of, and not that I've had any experience with this, but have you ever heard something called stinkweed? Stinkweed? Yeah. Um, you know, people smoke this stuff, like you know, uh, uh, it, it, it's kind of nasty. You're you gonna know. like this story. Yeah, you're so, gonna like this go story. So, um, 
get the bleep ready, the the bleep button ready. <laughs> get the bleep button ready because <laughs> this is a funny one. So I'm, I'm messing around with this thing for like three hours straight. My eyes are burning because I've been in the smoke. And I've been like right there inhaling this stuff, trying to get this to work because it was kind of a shoot from the hip kind of a deal. And uh it was working great. I was thirsty and hungry. I went to the convenience store <laughs> smelling like I just walked out of a burning poop building. And I walk into the, the room or into the convenience store and the clerk gives me this dirty look. I mean she was she probably, you know – 50 to 60 in that range and she just eyeballing me she give me the stink eye and i'm like what the heck's her problem anyway go back grab my gatorade i think a snickers bar or something <laughs> walk back up to the up to the counter and she leans forward and whispers and she goes are you high <laughs> like i'm looking at her kind of confused i'm like no are you <laughs> she's like you smell like weed i'm like what I don't know where you've been buying your weed, lady, but it's some sh- weed. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it, that's what the smell reminded me of. What oh, was that? I was like, but then I I didn't realize how bad I smelled, and I went home. I took a shower. I was washing the clothes. I had already showered. And my wife was like, "You stink," <laughs> and it was coming out of my pores. It was bad. Well, and your eyes were probably all blood. Oh yeah, yeah, because it was and, right there in the smoke. Yeah. Nice. And yeah, so I I probably looked like a total stoner dude. Good little buying. Mormon kid walks in and doesn't have a clue what she's talking about. <laughs> I didn't know the fact that I was buying munchies at the same time. Probably <laughs> Cheetos. Probably. And- no, man, that's just because I'm a fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! So this week we are going to talk amongst ourselves. No guests. We're just going to have a conversation about how to get started. So go ahead and tune out now and uh, come back next week. No, there just you go. No. So yeah, episode 20 and we've had a lot of people ask us more about livestock integration. Mm-hmm. So we're going to talk about small livestock integration. We're yes. not using cows with this. No. Um, and we want to tell you guys how to get started and how to get started not only in growing your food but how to get started integrating your systems. That's right. So – that's kind of what the topic is this week is, is integrating your systems. And if you're a homesteader or farmsteader, as I like to call them, um, at this point and you have goats and chickens and hopefully aquaponics and rabbits and quail or any of those combinations of things, what is it that you can do to reduce the input into your system and reduce the waste coming out of your system or where can you use it? So, Nick, what do you think is one of the best places to start? And and this could be, you know, let's go from the really small up to the typical homestead or farmstead of an acre or two. Okay. So uh, I got started in my backyard with five rabbits. HOA. HOA, uh, Hitler's little brother controlling the, the Third Reich, trying checking out my street. <laughs> so uh, ser- they're, they're strict. They – Anyway, uh, they would have killed me if they would have found my stash of rabbits and everything <laughs> in the backyard. Yeah, qualify the stash. <laughs> yeah. That's Nick at Hostel Hair. <laughs> so I am partial to rabbits. That's where I got started. And I would recommend starting with rabbits. Now, keep in mind that's coming from the guy selling the rabbit cages. But it is my belief that you should start with a staple animal and from there break, branch out. So the rabbits are a great, efficient source to start with. They will consume – for every pound of rabbit meat, you're going to consume about a pound and a half of feed. So so yeah, that, I would say start with rabbits. So one of the things that, that, that I've seen a lot of our listeners are already started too. Okay. So – Let's talk about uh, – and, and I think one of the most popular ways that people start is with chickens. Yes. So let's take those two things. I've got a couple of chickens. I'm going to take a couple of rabbits. What do I do now? How do I integrate even those two little systems? OK. Well, you're going to get waste from both of them. OK. And the rabbits 
have the best fertilizer to go right into a garden, but so right into the garden, cold. It, uh, yeah, it can what go. Do they call that it's a warm fertilizer. A warm it's fertilizer, ninety percent nitrate, so it doesn't need to be composted. That's right. Now your chickens poop. Ch- Chicken and poop is high nitrite and high ammonia because they poop and pee out the same hole. Right. So you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get a pH spike, um, and you don't want that to go straight into the garden. You need that to break down and become a nitrate. So you can take that rabbit or the the rabbit poop, put it in a raised bed garden. Yep. Really, you don't even need soil at this point. You could throw some dirt in there. From anywhere. Well, it's – Throw you, the rabbit poop in. If you have an established soil – Yeah, well, can, let's say you don't. Like right now, I don't. Well, don't cut me off here, Don. I'm getting at something here. All right. <laughs> so if you have an established soil bed and you want to add nitrogen slowly to it, you just leave it in the ball and uh-huh. throw it on there. And over – it will maintain its shape for up to three years or more and just slowly dribble the nitrogen out of it into the soil as you use it. Okay. Now, if you need to make soil, mm-hmm. and uh, Donna Bruce gives a great uh, a great class in in how to uh, to make soil, right? Uh, and, but if you need to make soil, then you will grind the manure or or mechanically break it down and mix it into the dirt that you have available. Uh, the softer, the better, obviously. So now we can take our chicken poop. Mm-hmm. We can take our rabbit poop. And we can compost the chicken poop with organic stuff coming out of your kitchen. Uh huh. And we can create soil with dirt, rabbit poop, chicken poop. Yep. So that's an integration, isn't it? I mean, that's right there. You're, you're, you're starting yeah. to integrate those systems mm-hmm. into a third. Now, one of the places that I would like to go with that is feed. Because yes. now we've got an input. We've, we've, okay, what do you do with the waste? Here's something you can do productive with the waste and continuously increase your garden, your raised beds, whatever kind of gardening you're doing. You've also got that input. And I think one of the best ways that we've talked about this many times is fodder. That's right. So with the rabbits and the chickens. Yep. And barley. Yeah, you can use barley. Some people are using wheat. How about um, half and half? Have you tried that? I haven't done it yet. Honestly, I've only done the barley so far just because uh, I've just had barley available. So I just went with that. Uh, some people use, um, what is it, black oil sunflower seeds. I've seen that, yeah. And uh, they'll mix that in with it. And I believe those are fairly inexpensive. So I'm not 100%, 100% sure on the cost of that. but So on the feed side, we can actually pretty much supplement – Almost 100%, if not 100% of rabbit's diet with barley. Yes. In fact, the, the, the nutritional makeup of barley is very similar to the pellets. The only difference is, uh, the density of dry matter. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't dehydrate the fodder. They eat it fresh and wet. Right. And so there's a lot more water weight in it. So you've got to compensate on the weight wise when you're feeding exactly. rather than you, six ounces. You almost, you're going to go to eight. Well, it's four ounces dry. Okay. Uh, so you're going to give them about half a pound, so eight ounces. Eight ounces. Um, will uh, will accommodate that, and you'll play with those numbers. I mean, if you've got lactating does, they get as much as they can eat. Right. If you've got kits that are on death row, I call it. You give them as much as they can eat, and uh, you know the other. What's nice is you've got the rabbits. When you start planting a garden, you're going to have to weed it, right? And the rabbits will eat anything that's green out of your garden. You pick it and you give it to them. If you throw weeds straight into your composter, you have successfully planted more weeds. Right. So right. You don't want to compost the seeds. Exactly. If you compost weeds, seeds, well, that's hard to say. Weed but seeds. Weed seeds, then you're going to get picked up by the FBI and the drug enforcement <laughs> task. Oh, different weeds. Never mind. Um, if you give it to the rabbit, they're going to digest those seeds mostly and you're not going to plant a harvest of, of, uh, the invasive weeds in your garden. So uh, on my rabbit system, uh-huh. I strain out the poop and That's we're, right. we're, we're just prepping an area for a garden. We haven't planted the garden back there yet. I've got an aquaponic system that's on the separate side of my house, but we, we do that. Now, what about the water? Cause I'm straining it out and then I can direct that water, which is full of rabbit urine uh-huh. and some liquid poop, basically urea you know. and different, uh, yeah. Nitrogen's so, left out of the poop. So what can I do with that? Have you used – I know you've talked about a few different things to do. Yes. I send it – what do I do? Send it into a drying pond? Um, do I – you know, 
put it directly well, in my garden to, to water my garden with? Well, if it's diluted enough, yeah, you can use it to water your garden. But if you're recycling the water to – like the hydroponic system is designed to to use the same water over and over. Well, once right. it becomes saturated with urea, you've got a pretty potent high oh, yeah. high pH liquid and you know I don't recommend doing it until you can smell ammonia, but – uh, that's what happens eventually. You've got very concentrated urea. Well, urea, if you, if you, uh, what do you call it? Uh, if you, if. Ferment? No, no, no. Uh, dis- distill. Yeah. If okay. you remove some of the water out uh-huh. of it and get it back into how it would have come out of the rabbit. Right. Bottled it up. You can sell that to, um, trappers that want to trap predators. Okay. So when I'm using the, the automatic watering, or cleaning system on the cage. One of the things I found is the water goes through the poop to be strained out uh-huh. and it gets full of poop too. It smells like poop. Yeah. Can I still do that? I don't see why not. I mean, an animal, as long as it smells like rabbit, it's going to draw the, it's going to draw the predators in. Yeah. Um, they're going to want a little bit clean. They're not going to want poop particles in it. Right, you know, right. It's got to look strain like, it. And, yeah, yeah. Which but, I really have no desire to do, but it's possible. Yeah, that's a possibility. You know, keep in mind, I'm not out there doing this right now. I'm just saying there's a market available for it. Right. Um, the other thing is if you put it in a settling tank and a large, if you have a large tank that, um, uh, like an IBC tote, 275 right. gallon tote, you can build like a, oh, a cube lattice is the best way to describe this, which is basically a cube made out of PVC that you wrap um, string around a bunch so that you have like nice four-inch holes in the string. Mm-hmm. And then you set that in the tank where the urea is breaking down and you expose that to the sun. And now you want the water moving through there slowly. Um, but at that point, the sun will grow – the algae will grow on those strings and basically give you a nice big thick algae crop on the strings. Right. And you can take that whole cube out of the IBC tote and slide it into a tote where you have tilapia. Now, in theory – You're going to feed them. What's that? You're feeding your tilapia. Exactly. The, well, the algae grown – tilapia right. eat algae. Right. So you can feed the tilapia off of the product of the urea. Now, when urine exits the body of a rabbit, it is sterile. Right. So if you can keep it in a sterile, not, I mean, not a sterile clean room or anything like that, but if you can get it to where it's, the poop is strained and, and removed from the system, mm-hmm. it would probably be a little bit better. Um, which we're working on that. Um, but, uh, you can, Use that, that urine without any problems as far as growing bacteria and things like that because the bacteria won't break down or won't, won't grow in, in a high alkaline, um, state. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So moving on, there's other uses that, you know, that, that's the way to keep the urine in the, in food production. Now, if anybody's distilling their own alcohol, I want to tell you guys a little secret. Uh, fermenting, if you go and buy the super yeast that's really good for fermenting your, your alcohol, uh, it'll cost you a lot more. And I've actually had a couple of conversations with people that have the super yeast. And I said, so what's the difference between yeast and super yeast? He said, well, there's additives in there to feed the yeast. It's like, okay, what are the additives in, in it to, to feed the yeast? He said, well, food grade urea. It's like, are you kidding me? You're, you're paying for urine to go in alongside of the yeast and it's a, it's a powdered urine. And, uh, and she said, well, there's also protein powder in there too. It's like, so you're adding protein in urea alongside of sugars and then you ferment all of those and the immediately made my, uh, you know, Immediately, I started thinking. Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, rabbit urine like crazy. You grow a crop alongside of that of something else, and you mix the two together. You're gonna have 
cheap super yeast because the yeast will have a well-balanced diet of urine, protein, and your sugars. Yeah. And the proteins, well, that can come from the guts of the rabbit. So when that comes down. Very good. So you've got a complete integrated system just off of that. Yeah, well, it, exactly. And you can you can use that to make fuel. I'm not an alcohol drinker. I don't think I'd drink rabbit piss and <laughs> Yeah. Well, <laughs> rabbit. You can put it in your car. Exactly. You can so, burn it, no problem. Yeah, and with a still, you can go to E85 and dump it right into your tank with hardly any conversion. Exactly. So, so, and, and that's another integration method I guess we could talk about as, as we've talked about at the beginning of the show here, the gasifier. Mm -hmm. You can run a generator off of it by burning the rabbit poop. Exactly. You want it very dry. It's got to be under 16%, right. which is in, in Arizona, what's our humidity today? Like yeah, well, not 12, yeah, <laughs> if, if we're that. Lucky. Yeah. So, so we can do that. Now, let's, what other animals are we seeing at the farmsteads? Quail. Yep. Um, aquaponics, mm -hmm. gardening, goats. So we've got, you know, a lot of people doing all these things. Um, starting with rabbits, starting with chickens. I think another place to start is with the quail. So you've come up with a quail cage. I, I mm -hmm. love the quail cage that you built for me. And basically we put in f one female and, or, uh, four, four females and one male per section. I've got three mm -hmm. little sections in my cage. And that's pretty, each quail is producing on average an egg a day. I break it down to, you know, a little less than that. It's, so. it's about 300 eggs a year per right. female. So I, I go five a week per female. Uh -huh. That's kind of what I count my averages on. They take so, the weekends off. Yeah, I figure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So out of that, we're getting pickled eggs because I love pickled eggs. So we're doing Yum. the, we're hard boiling them and we can do 30 to 40 and we can incubate those. Now, I think as far as starting, one quail cage for breeders, one quail cage for grow outs, and at least one incubator. Now, we've gone a little bit different. We've gone to two incubators. Basically, we incubate um, for two weeks, 14 days, and one with an automatic egg turner. Those run about 150 bucks there, thereabouts with the automatic egg turner. We do one still air, which three days prior to hatch, they go into very high humidity, and they sit there and they hatch there and they dry there for about 10 hours. Then we open it up and we take them out. They then go into a grow-out cage. So by continuously rotating, uh, we have three grow-out cages for the smaller ones. And when they hit about four weeks, they're pretty good size. They go into our main grow-out um, which means they're going to be slaughtered. Uh, <laughs> death row. Death row, yeah. And there are meat birds. So we can do about 40 of those a week. And out of that, we're getting the, the, the hard-boiled quail eggs. We use them for, you know, other dishes in the kitchen. We're also taking those quail eggs, and you can do this with chicken eggs, and grinding them up. Um, we bake them for a little while to kill any type of bad contaminants. So this is empty trash, mm -hmm. and you can throw those right in your You're composter. You're talking about eggshells, correct? Eggshells, okay. yeah. Throw it in your composter if you want. But you can also take that and grind it down. We have a, a blender, a big blender. We actually grind that down, and we'll use that in our aquaponic system to increase calcium. Mm -hmm. So we can integrate right into that. And we, you can – now, I don't suggest doing this, but you can feed it back to your chickens. You can also supplement the goats if you need to with calcium and use that in your own diet if you wanted to as well. Uh, by baking it, you're killing everything off of that. So there's there's really a zero waste in that. And the quail poop is just like chicken poop, and it can be used out in the compost. Or the nice thing about quail, uh, and we've had an episode on quail with Scott mm – -hmm. um, I think the cool thing is you can do that in a HOA too. So if you're stuck sure. in an HOA environment or a small patio home or something, I think rabbit and Limited quail. Limited on space and angry neighbors. Yeah, I think rabbit and quail are probably a key along with the aquaponics. Yep. I'm an aquaponics guy, so aquaponics is anywhere you go. You yeah. can do it in your kitchen. It's actually really good to have in your house, especially in Arizona. Um, we use koi in the one in our house, and it increases the humidity in our home which therefore is also decreasing static um, and makes it a healthier environment. We've got living plants in the house. 
the same reason you have house plants. So you're cleaning the air and doing all that fun stuff right in your, in, in, in our kitchen in this case. And throughout the house, we're putting little tanks. Uh, we saw the little kind of countertops. So we put them in the rooms with a goldfish or one of the beta fish in there. Um, so you can take these systems and you can integrate them completely all throughout. Um, the quail or the, uh, the rabbit poop can also be used to, and the compost, your your organic matter coming out to raise worms. And my favorite, black soldier fly. And black larva. soldier flies. And we did a whole show on black soldier flies. That's so right. So if you're new to listening to this, the quail show and the black soldier flies are certainly worth going back and listening to. Yes. Um, the biopod is awesome. Mm-hmm. But you don't have to start with it either. No, you can five build gallon a, bucket yeah. is is enough to start with. You can build a five gallon bucket little biopod and uh, grow your grow your black soldier fly larva there. And that's where you can integrate rabbits and quail. The link is the black soldier flies. So the manure from the rabbits goes into feeding these black soldier fly larva. And that's the same thing with the aquaponics. Exactly, it's, it's a key integration. Mm-hmm. And chickens, not just quail. Um, your tilapia fish, your and, and everything. Yeah, you'll have so. to forgive me because I'm I'm not anti chicken, but I'm not pro chicken either. Like I I've had bad experiences in an HOA. Chickens just don't work right. unless you've got very understanding neighbors and they'll keep their mouths shut. Yeah, I, I love our chickens, but I'm not in an HOA. Yeah, so. and that's why because I wanted chickens. And you suck. I'm uh-huh. <laughs> no, just kidding. No, we actually. <laughs> We actually got to meet all of our neighbors because my wife was like, hey, we should get some chickens. I'm like, all right, sure. She, she bought – I think she bought 10 of those big white uh, – I don't know. The, like the leghorns? The, yeah, the leghorns. Yeah. And the guy that we bought them from said, yeah, they won't fly off. It will be fine. You know, it's this redneck being in Apache <laughs> Junction. And uh, so we took them home and it was nighttime and – we turned them loose in the backyard. They all kind of huddled under the tree, like, "Oh, this is gonna be great. They like it here. Oh, it's great." And this is this is before we did rabbits or anything else in the backyard. Next morning, they're all up at the crack of dawn. <laughs> and my wife's like, "Oh my gosh, they're so loud. They're so loud." And then, and then I get a call while I'm at work. She's in tears. These freaking chickens are flying over the fences, and she's chasing them up the tree. Yeah, you need to keep them in a coop for uh, at least a month there, Nick. Uh, well, yeah. Again, it was like four o'clock in the afternoon. She decided she wanted chickens, and six o'clock we were driving to buy some. <laughs> so, anyway, who knows who wears the pants in that family? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, a little bit. It, it <laughs> a little was, bit. It was more of okay, honey. Let's see how this goes. Okay, now you're going to listen to me. Why don't we go with rabbits? <laughs> so, so, I mean, yeah, I know. All right, being anti-chicken. No. Yeah, I, well, I, we just, I know, I know. Um, but the black soldier flies are the key. Yep. Uh, a big key because the rabbit waste. Now, when you start your black soldier flies, it's probably not a good idea to take a bunch of rabbit poop and stick it in the container and expect black soldier flies to show up. No. You, you want to get that started. Yeah, you, you want to get a, going. a nice, healthy colony. And then you're going to slowly add that. And then you can take that and, and feed your fish with it, feed your quail with it, feed your chickens with it. Um, one of the things that we've done is, is actually, um, put a bug zapper above our fish tank, by the way. Yes. So redneck you, you fish can, feeder. Yeah. You can take that and, and collect some of those insects and put those back into your quail, uh, to help increase the protein levels. Mm-hmm. Cause quail require very high protein. Yeah, close to 30%. 30%. 27% like yeah. is where Scott was saying. Yeah, and it's kind of – it can be tough to do that if you're buying chicken food, which is around 18. You really yeah. need to get turkey starter. Um, in Phoenix, we found a, a organic non-GMO supply of that that's right at the 27%. And then we mix in some some meal worms um, and, and insects with that, and it works really well. So we're getting that up there in the 30 35% range. So – you can again you guys just kind of look for the integration in whatever systems you have currently and you don't need to start big black soldier fly start in a little container with what's a small size for a rabbit cage neck um you think 3 or you mean compartments yeah how many compartments yeah i would say minimum you you want to have a breeding trio and that's bare bones minimum i actually recommend starting with 5 rabbits and that may sound overwhelming, but it really isn't. 
Uh, it's a very small, low footprint, uh, two foot by six foot against the wall somewhere. You're good to go. Yeah. Yeah. We've got, how, what do we have now? I've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, and, uh, two bucks and, uh, six females and then two cages for grow out. I think is what mm-hmm. we've got. So. I mean, it's, it's certainly doable and that's in a very small area. Like you said, um, you know, two foot by six foot. The quail are a very small area. So you don't need to start big. Yeah. It's very true. And that's one of the reasons I don't really go after chickens is they, they like to roam around a little bit. Yeah. In my backyard, it's not chicken congruent. Um, whereas the quail, they are very happy, very lazy in a smaller area. Yeah. Yeah, so, they don't, they don't. Plus they're 40% more efficient than chickens. I believe that's what Scott was saying. Yeah, as far as meat goes. And I actually meat like and them. eggs too. They're so easy to process too. Mm-hmm. I don't like processing chickens. Um, yeah, I'll do it. Plucking. Plucking, even if you have a whiz It's a bang, plucking mess. You know, you can, you can throw <laughs> them in there and it plucks them. I, I just don't like it. They, frankly, they stink. Uh-huh. Um, when you clean them, when you compare that to a rabbit, it's, it's a very foul So smell. easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> and rabbits take me about two minutes to process. A chicken takes me twenty minutes to process. Yeah. Um. So I'm I'm not a big fan of that. The quail are the same thing though. I'm about two minutes, if that, on a quail. When we get a little assembly line going and you're doing thirty. Oh yeah. You know, you it's get boom f- done. I can get them done in thirty five forty minutes. We're done and we've got meals for a week. Yeah. You know. Um. Not every day, but you know, three meals for a week done out of that. So and that's for a family of five. So again. Whatever you have, we have goats too. We've, we've, uh, found that integrating us with goats, we use the goat milk to help supplement again the chickens and the quail, give them a little bit of goat milk. I haven't given it any to the rabbits yet. I don't know if it would, they'd need it or not or if it would be in a, any benefit. You know, it's something to look into, but I don't know if they're, I don't know if they would drink it or not. I, I imagine they would. I mean, they I start think. off their mammal. They'll know, they'll yeah. know the smell of milk. I know yeah, cats but, sure like it. Oh, we feed the dogs, our pet dogs. Uh huh. We've, <laughs> oh, you have like meat dogs too? Yeah. You <laughs> sick son say. of a. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, we feed them. They love the eggs, uh, both quail and, and the chicken eggs. We'll feed them that. And, uh, uh, the rabbit, if, if you, if you ever, wanted to you can certainly feed the scraps of the rabbit to the dogs and help oh, yeah. supplement well, their feed remember if you've got a dog that's got allergies and you take them into the vet the first thing that the vet's going to do is put is tell you to put them on a potatoes and rabbit diet right because that's what they well they wouldn't exactly dig up potatoes and eat them in the wild but rabbits is what they would eat if they were yeah. Running around in the wild. Right. So, I mean, they sure as heck wouldn't go and husk an ear of corn and start gnawing on that. Exactly. So, yeah, um, I think that's kind of the integration, you know, it, it's just a matter of common sense. Finding what you guys, whatever you're doing, um, start, start doing something. Uh, we had met a gentleman out at the Prepper Fest and that was kind of where he's set. He's been researching and watching and doing, start actually doing it. Yeah. Start small. Or start big. Just start. Yep. Just take a personal inventory. Figure out how much time and money you have. Right. To do this. Um, don't go broke doing it. You know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to spend 10 grand and get nothing out of it. Um, but you also don't want to spend 50 bucks and not get anything out of it either. So if you're going to do it, do it. Think, you know, come to the, some of the classes. Keep listening to the show. We give you, a lot of free advice. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, we, we're constantly, we're doing what we can to get people involved in this. In fact, on the 21st of June, I've got a rabbit processing class and also rabbits 101 class if you're in the Prescott area. Or if you want to get out of the valley. Exactly. <laughs> it's hotter than a freaking heck down here. You need to come up to, come up to Prescott and enjoy a little bit of, uh, a little bit of the North Country, nice weather. Absolutely. Hey, you know, speaking of a little cooler weather and <laughs> I got an eye twitch. <laughs> That's annoying. Awesome. <laughs> speaking of the cooler weather, um, I want to do a shout out this week. That's going to replace the other thing. So it's our weekly We're shout no out. Plugging. That's right. It's a weekly shout out. So the weekly shout out this week 
is VROB, which is, um, I think, what is it? Vacation v- rental. No VRBO. Dot com. VRBO. Yeah. Um, but also go to the We Grow Ours Facebook page and I'll put a post to the place that we rented. It, a friend of mine owns it up in the, uh, Taos kind of area, Eagle's Nest up in New Mexico. Mm-hmm. We're going to go up for a vacation up there and I'm going to put a link to his particular cabin on there, which happens to be, uh, six bedroom, sleeps 14, five bathrooms on a hundred acres in the middle of nowhere with a lake a few minutes from it and a river running through the back. Um, so I plan to go for a week and we're going to go fishing and we're going to go fishing at the lake and we're probably going to go kayaking and just have a blast for a week and turn off all the electronics and no TV in this place. So I think no we're not going to have a We Grow Our show that we're week. We're not going to have a We Grow Our show that week. I'm going on vacation. It's been a long time since I did it. So this week's shout out is to uh, the Eagle's Nest Ranch condo, which is CNC Ranch, I believe. And I will put a link on the Facebook page and I'll put a link directly on the show notes as well to his cabin. So I'm going to go up there and enjoy it. I want you guys to go take a look and check this place out. It is killer. And if you get a chance, if you're anywhere near there or you want to fly in, it's worth it, man. This is going to be amazing. So that's Speaking the of uh, frivolous spending, go ahead and hit that donate button over in the top right-hand corner so that Don can enjoy this vacation. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I, I wish that was the case. No, I think um, we've got like 30 cents in the account, which is cool. That's yeah, cool. you know, it's enough to get us going for another episode. Oh, um, gosh. No, if you, seriously, that's actually a good question. If you donate to our show, what do we do with it? And I think the answer is we put on classes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're looking at doing some film screenings for some different movies like uh, Food Patriots. Mm-hmm. We're, we're looking at renting out a theater for, for it. Still trying to put the stuff into plans. Um, we may buy some equipment. So when we have guests in the studio, it's not quite so echoey, you know, something like a new microphone. We've got a lot of our own money invested in to the equipment to do this. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a lot of our time, not just in talking, but in editing and writing descriptions and show notes. And Nick is going to start blogging a little bit more. Oh, uh, am I? Okay. That's right. So <laughs> we've got some time into this and that donation goes to help the hosting and the hosting of the podcast and the hosting of the website. So if you guys are so inclined, we would love it. Um, if you don't have the money, that's cool too. Just keep listening. Um, yeah, find us some other guests. Yeah, yeah. Tell us what you want to hear about because you know we we need to know. We've got a, a good guest coming up hopefully next week. Uh, we're going to have another gentleman who has a book out and is pretty big in the prepper industry. And that should be a lot of fun. Um, I'm excited got for a it. movie producer coming up. In the next couple of weeks as well. So, I mean, we've got some, some good things coming. So keep, keep tuning in and checking that out. So that's right. Yeah. So that was our shout out. <laughs> so what else do you have for integration? Well, let's recap real quick. So you got to start with a good feed. Fodder is a good way to do it. Um, I wanted to also mention Moringa. Yeah. I've heard a few people say that now. Yeah. Moringa is, uh, around 40% protein in the leaves alone. So you want to watch it though. You don't want to give them too much. You want to be able to dilute it some. Can we eat that? Yes, we can. What's it taste like? Uh, like a leaf. <laughs> it's not, it's not like delicious, but it's probably, it's close to skinny, um, spinach. So can I we put it in like, uh, salads? I was thinking like protein shakes and stuff. Oh yeah, because protein shakes are gross anyways. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> wife makes pretty decent ones sometimes. I, you know, I, Give me a cheeseburger. I'll get my protein that way. <laughs> I don't, a rabbit burger. Oh yeah, shredded, shredded, pulled rabbit, barbecue sauce. Okay, well we're gonna leave early Ooh. because I'm gonna go eat now. I love it. <laughs> so anyway, so you can start with the moringa. You can actually grow bamboo and willow branches for rabbits. Yep. In fact, I've heard some people say that rabbits can survive off of nothing but willow. Um, it's not as fun for them, you know, it's, nobody wants to eat just one thing. So, you know, you can pick, uh, for all of you that live in a greener area or even, even in Arizona, if you've got a lawn, uh, make sure you got plenty of dandelion growing out in there. Oh, that stuff, that's good for you too. That's good for people. Yeah. It's funny. Growing up, my dad was like, Oh, yeah, there's weeds. It's weeds. It's weeds. I'm like, all right. Yeah. They're weeds and think of them as such. But the reality is dandelions will be a really good contributing 
factor to a contributing nutrient to um raising rabbits or any animals really it's very very good and nutritious the uh dandelions are really good to grow in your yard that and clover things of that sort you can actually buy meadow grass seed which is similar to timothy when it grows up a lot of horse people will seed their their uh pastures with it yeah goats too and good you, for the goats. but you can throw that in your backyard in an hoa and it just looks like normal grass but you've got a better a better nutritional content of the grass. Yeah. If you're so, going to water something, it might as well have a, a use. Oh, I agree. Yeah. Especially out here in the desert. I don't like water in anything. Yeah. It's, they've got a billboard up that, that, uh, it's, it's a bunch of green straws right next to each other. Yeah. And it says that sucking sound isn't the wind. Yeah. And it oh. looks, it looks like a lawn. <laughs> Throughout this country, we're in severe drought. So yeah. And we're draining the aquifers to water useless lawns you know don't plant lawns plant gardens yeah grow some freaking food people exactly no <laughs> no don you're the aquaponics guy what yeah. what kind of water savings will i get if i do aquaponics well the industry says you can get up to 95 percent uh, out so here in will, arizona you will use 95 percent less water. water than conventional farming that's right and, okay. and that includes if you're watering your lawn, because we're not watering anything, we're keeping everything in a closed loop system. Uh-huh. So we're recycling all that water and getting the nutrients to help grow the plants. In, in reality, so the water's more of a carrier than it is a yeah, exactly. We're losing it to evaporation, kind of catalyst. and we're losing it to what the plants eat. Um, so by keeping it in that closed loop, you're, you're really out here in the desert saving about 85 to 90 percent from what I can tell. And the reason I say not 95 is because we are – we have to do some water changes out here. Uh-huh. Our water is very, very hard. Uh, Does it screw up your pH levels if you don't do the water changes? It, it, can, it can screw them up in the long run. You can end up with high calcium, which actually – uh, stops the plants from uptaking some other minerals and, and it can cause some pH issues in the long run. It, it actually, you get those high salts, high calcium levels and your plants aren't going to be able to uptake. So huh. you, you can end up with a nutrient deficiency even more than you will a pH, which you could control. So you want to do some of that, but if you're, if you're going to integrate a wicking bed or even a raised bed garden and you can drain your water out into that, now you're taking that water you've used that, it twice. And, and you've used it and you've integrated not only aquaponics into a wicking bed but into a raised bed garden. So you, And it's phenomenal water to use because now you're adding even more fertilizer into your garden. And what we do is we drain out of the bottom of the tank where the Take solids all the are. solids out. Yeah. Right. Okay. Or we'll use a suction, you know, like a fish tank cleaner basically where you'd clean the they, – they design them for cleaning the pebbles in the bottom. We'll use that in the sump tank. To get those solids out and put it right into the, to the grow beds. So that's a phenomenal idea and it helps clean that sump out. So go ahead and clean those beds out, get all those solids into your sump tank, let it sit there for a day or two and then pump that out using a siphon right into your, into your garden. And, and I mean, the, the nutrient levels in your garden will, will skyrocket. Huh. I like it. Yeah. So you can even, you know, integrate your water. So. Um, tilapia, again, black soldier flies for food. You could even take some of your greens that you're growing and throw it in there, see if they like that. You can do insects along with the quail. So you put those, you could integrate your quail right over top of your fish tank, feed them all the same thing. A lot more beds, correct? No, not necessarily beds. You have to have more filtering. Filter. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it really depends on the size of your tank. If you're talking about a 3,000 gallon, uh, pond, or, you know, fish tank, something like that. Putting five or six quail over is really going to do nothing. If you're talking about an IBC tote and you're putting five quail over it, you're going to get a much higher concentration. As you said, the pH levels are different because, um, and it's, it's not a, you, you want to monitor things even closer. Okay. So it could change that. So what, I mean, let's, let's say I've got 30 quail and I want to use their manure in an aquaponic situation. Well, See, you, well, well, how would you go about starting up the experiment, would you say? You're going to need a big tank. A big tank. A big tank. Um, okay. You know, 5,000 gallon type big. So okay. I wouldn't go, you said 30 quail? Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't go over maybe 10 quail per 
fifteen hundred gallons max. Um, really? Yeah, and you're going to want to make sure you have something like a catfish as well as some tilapia in there. That um, way, the catfish can eat some of the yeah. You're going to some of the, some of the stuff that, that. So what what happens when you're integrating? It's not just about the waste. In fact, it's not about the waste. Uh, most of the waste will dissolve in the water. Okay, okay. so um, when it comes to aquaponics or any kind of fish tank. You, you have a few options. Dilution. Mm-hmm. So if you can dilute the pollutants in the tank, it's going to be a healthier system. So the larger, the, the more amount of water you have in your entire system, the more it's going to be diluted. So you're diluting those poisons basically. The other option is filtration. So you could add huge amounts of filtration to the system to make that happen. But you're, By you're filtration- actually. Can, you're talking grow beds, correct? Grow beds is, is definitely one of the filtration. When you're adding those solids from the quail, you definitely want to pre-filter before you go into your grow beds. Oh, um, really? Yeah. You don't just want to go direct in. You'd want to pre-filter that a little bit, in my opinion. Um, the other thing is you're not trying to just use the waste from the quail. You're actually trying to save the feed that you're giving to the quail. That's really what's going to feed your fish, okay. not just their waste. Um, the fish aren't going to eat all the waste. Mo- again, most of that will dissolve. Okay, it, it's going to hit the water and it's going to dissolve. Now, the, fee- the fish will eat some, mm-hmm. but it's going to dissolve in the water. What you're doing is those quail, if you've had quail, they are very, very messy. Um, they can't pick up a piece of food and eat it. They need to pick up 12 pieces of food, drop 11, and eat one. Yeah. Okay, they're going to scratch. They're going to do all this stuff that quail do. And they're still and, 40% more efficient than chickens. Yeah, so, <laughs> you know, getting the food into them is the hard part, from the dish into the quail. Everything else that's lost is usually wasted. So if if you're looking at the bottom of your quail cage and, you emptying the, and you're emptying those trays out, most of what you're emptying is, is food. food with some waste in it. Okay, so by taking, and, and since tilapia and quail want... 26%, 30% protein in their diet, and you've got mealworms and insects and black soldier flies and all that, you could take that and that's what now you're feeding your fish. So you're actually conserving a ton of food by doing it and feeding two species at once. So pretty awesome. Yeah, it's it's not uh, – most people think, oh, you, you integrate them by with the droppings. The droppings have very little to do with it and, and that's where you want to watch your water levels – but it's actually more about food co- um, conservation and integration than it is about waste. Does that help? It does, but the waste is still an issue. Well, again, you can dilute your 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 waste mm-hmm. with a lot of water, or you can filter it. Um, now, the fish will eat some, and, and and a catfish will eat some of the stuff that sinks and things like that. But it, it's not, and it's it's a cross kind of species thing. You think about in the wild, does this happen? Not really. Well, sure it does. Have you well, seen a bird poop in a lake? Oh, okay. I too. I mean, in I nature, it happens visual, all the time. I mean, quail aren't going to hang out over top of water. Well, quail might not, but it, Other a bird's a bird. Um, you know, a they, bird's a bird. Okay. <laughs> a bird's a bird. So yeah, and some of the. I mean, have you seen a duck poop? Yes, I have. <laughs> they poop a lot. That's, that's, it ain't a little. It's a lot. Oh, yeah. And it's like an oil slick every time they drop bowel. Yeah. So you're taking a little thing, this little itty bitty bird and talking about little itty bitty droppings. One well, nature, you've got big birds out there doing the exact same thing. In much bigger um, bodies and, of water. And, and, and then again, it, yeah, it goes down into the soil in the bottom and it, it helps, you know, the ecosystem thrive. So you've got a higher dilution factor though. You're diluting that water. So filter or dilute, it's your option, but you've got to do one of those two things. Okay. That makes sense. I've, it's, it's something that we're playing with. We've got the research and development team on it. Yeah. And by research and development team, you're listening to them. Well, we've got some other people that help us out too. So <laughs> it's not just us and we'd oh, love to hear. It is. It's all us. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I'd love if, to hear from the listeners, though, yes. as far as what they're doing. Yeah, let's and pictures too. Send us some pictures. If it's pretty, we'll post it. Oh heck yeah! Even if it's ugly, we'll post it. There you go. I want to see Dawn's functional. easy. It's. <laughs> I want to see functional. So whatever functional. you guys are doing, let us know. Um, and if we've helped you, let us know. Yes, um, I'd love to know if you're taking some of the, the advice and doing it. We so. like the warm, fuzzy feeling. Oh yeah, that's why we do this. So. Yeah, we're, we're good. Is that all that we had to cover? 
I think so as far as integration. Uh, I, I think it's a lot for one, one kind of yeah. podcast. Yeah. We covered a ton of things, believe it or not. One thing I wanted to touch on was, um, Don, you gave me crap for having turtles in my aquaponic system before. Yes, I have. And I found a use for them, and, but not in the closed loop system of the food. Uh, you, the, turtles are great for taking care of proteins that you don't want. The yes, guts they are. and stuff like that. Cause guts, guts out of rabbits and quail and, and fish, you do not want to throw in your composter because they're going to smell really bad. Unless you've got black soldier flies, which will take yes. them real easy. Now, wait a minute. If you could take those and put them in a separate tank uh-huh. and, and put some filtering on that, I wonder if you could grow duckweed in that tank. Well, again, it's going to, it's going to be or, contaminated or the with. Gonna, Yes, they will eat the duckweed. Yeah, but uh, – all right. So one of the things that cleans – I'm going to get into this whole thing. One of the things you can do to filter uh-huh. water is grow algae. Yes. Algae will actually help clean the water. So I wonder if the duckweed would uptake the salmonella. I'm going to have to look into that. But then what would you do with the duckweed if you've got the salmonella in it? Well, if You can't feed you it can't. back to your fish. No, or or your so, ducks or anything So else. my point is uh, looking at the wicking beds yeah. we talked about, you could actually grow uh, – different types of grasses in that wicking bed too, like a, a hard stem grass, like sweet, Absolutely. Like sweet sorghum and sugar cane. Yeah. Well, and bamboo. Yeah. And well, sugar beets. What I'm, what I'm focusing on though is high sugar foods because if you've got a contaminant that you don't want to eat. Right. Burn it. Burn it. Yeah. So. So sugar beets. Sugar beets, uh, sweet sorghum, sugar cane, all of those things can be used to filter the water to, of the, these nasty turtles because they, they're super poopers, man. Right. Uh, you think ducks are bad. You should see a high protein aquatic animal <laughs> poop out. Nice. Anyways, the, the water fogs, it's awful. Anyway, but that, that manure, um, can then be that, that fish, that, that turtle waste can then be used to grow the, these fuel plants. And you can feed them the protein waste exactly. from processing your other animals. Exactly. And they'll be happy as a clam or a yeah. turtle with a mouthful of guts. Yeah. Yeah, good so, idea. And I they like also that. one of my favorite things to do is when we get the grasshoppers, and uh, you know tons of grasshoppers, and we had some that were like big six inch long grasshoppers. Ooh, fish would love them too. Well, they're they were too big for the fish that I had. They'd come up and try and pick legs off when I'd throw them in there. <laughs> but I throw them in, and the turtles come up and just <laughs> like nice. the noise that it makes. It just is. <laughs> <laughs> this is huge, crunching, awesome noise. And then also, uh, when you farm, no matter what you do, you can be as clean as you want to. If you have an outbuilding and there's any poop or anything hits the ground, you're going to have mice. Yes. You're going to have, and we, we should probably, issue. we should yes. probably have an episode on, on rodent control and things like that. But, um, at my place, I have live traps for the mice. Uh, and you have to feed those to the turtles? That's right. Well, you know what? I've got a lot of turtle food at my house then. Do you really? Oh, yeah. See? Because we've got see, a mouse problem. Do you? We're, oh, we're just man. running into this at this time of year and we keep coming across all the babies like to live under the, the quail cage. Um, oh, really? Yeah. We've got, I keep pulling out these little pinkies. I mean, like. There you go. Hey, a, those things will cost you like three bucks yeah, a piece. Yeah, but I'm afraid to feed them to my, you know. To, to anything that we have, because I don't want the disease. Oh well, so yeah, we'll have to I'm, discuss I'm not saying I'm not saying feed it to the things you're going to eat. Right, right. No, I hear you. I love the idea. But if you've got snakes, yeah, uh, snakes. There's very few uh, contaminants that will hurt a snake coming from a mammal. Right. They're not going to catch rabies. Right. No, I I know. No, so I think it's a wonderful idea. You can feed all of these lives. That's all I need to do is now. I need to go get snakes now. Hey, there you go. <laughs> Just add I'm, to sure, the I'm sure that Angie will love that. That's right. She's a big fan of spiders, I, if I remember. <laughs> oh, I'll tell her you said that. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us for episode 20. Woohoo! 20! I appreciate, uh, go, if you go on, uh, facebook.com slash we grow ours and follow us there. Twitter at we grow ours. And I'm trying to this Pinterest thing. I still can't get it. I don't know. Not quite. We no, need a Pinterest quite. expert if so you're for, listening. Yeah. Well, it's not an I, I just, I, I just gotta like do it. Oh, okay. We need a I mean, motivator a for not the thing. It's not hard. It's just, I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm starting to see the merits in it. So, um, we're going to try and get our YouTube going pretty soon. Uh, you know, so go to Facebook, watch for that. 
and Twitter. Those are the big places. And of course, on our webpage at www.wegrowers.com and www.wegrowers.com slash ask us is where you can leave your feedback, ask your questions, record your voice, send us photos, whatever you want to do. Photos. Lots of photos. Woo! All right, guys. We'll catch you next week.